Hey there, I hope you're doing great. My name is Nate and I want to show you something that I saw in another video by Joanna Kurpiewska, a fellow e-learning developer. She showed a little micro interaction of inserting a text field and it, it vibrates if it's wrong and stuff like that. But she was referencing another video and that really caught my eye because there we have a text field and when you start typing it expands. So I was like, can we do that in Storyline? Of course we can. So let me show you how. Okay, so in that video the the object, so the text field was a pill shaped. So we're gonna start with something like this. We're gonna pull this back and we get the pill shaped thing. Now, the idea of how you can expand this is to have two of these objects, something like that, and then you just push them apart and it looks like the whole field is expand the whole field is expanding so we're gonna do this now but first we have to prepare the design so we just we need basically two halves the right half and the left half so let's do this now so uh, my size is gonna be 160 by 65 uh, this is something I practiced before and fill no fill shape outline black but actually we want the left half to be empty. There's no line there. We want it to be cut out. And I don't want to put objects over it like white box or something like that. So here's what we can do. Here's a nice trick. We go to line style, uh, sorry, line color. We say gradient and direction. We're gonna do this. So stop one should be totally black. Stop two should also be black. But stop three should also be black, but transparency should be set to 100% and stop position to zero. And now we can just move the stop position of the middle one, stop two. You can see how it expands here. So I, I want to go right to the part where it starts to, you know, uh, go to the angle part. So we're just gonna dial it a bit back. Yeah, that's the result we're looking for. Now we need another one on the other side. So the best way is just to copy paste, go back to line color and just switch the direction and you get those two halves. Now we can just align them up and it looks like one, you know, peel shaped text box. Uh, so that's part number one and now, now let's insert our input field and it's gonna be sized to 260 by 45 and aligned nicely in the middle here. Now our text uh, field should be totally blank. I mean uh, no outline, no colors, nothing, nothing and align to middle center and align to middle vertically and we're gonna use courier new courier new and the size of the font should be 16 like that okay maybe let's let's just have a quick preview see what's going on here yeah what you would expect Okay, so we have our basics done, our design is done, and now we need to focus on the animations. So we want the, the box to nicely expand or go in if user types or delete, deletes characters. So we're gonna add these animation paths now. And just before that, let's just rename these guys. So this one is right, this one is left, so we know what's going on. I'm gonna hide left, and let's just add animations to the right one. So motion path, it's gonna go in this direction and it's gonna be very quick and it will, let's call it out. And let me add another motion path. So this one is in, also very short, relative start point. Also this one should have a relative start point and both should have the length of five pixels. So I started with the wide, long animation path, so it's easier to click on, and then now I'm shorting it. 
5 pixels. Okay, this should be it. Now let's go to the left one. We're gonna do the same, so let me cut here. Okay, my animation paths are done, and now we need to start working on the interaction. So first, let's delete all these triggers. Who needs them? So whenever user presses a key, animation should happen. So let's focus on that animation, and then we're gonna jump right back to triggers. Let's create a new layer called Out. And we're gonna say, move right along out when timeline starts. And just copy paste left along out when timeline starts. So that's the basics down. Now we're go gonna go back to our base layer and create a trigger, show layer out when user presses a key letter A. Now you would need to do this for all the letters. Probably there's a JavaScript for this, but I'm not familiar with it. So I'm just gonna add three triggers here. If you're gonna do this, just add triggers for all the alphabet and maybe a few more characters. So just copy paste, I'll do the ABC. So B, copy paste, and C. Uh, where's my B? All right. So A, B, C. A, C, B, but <laughs> that's storylines uh, order here. So let's just, let's just try this, if this works. So A, 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 yeah, okay. Let's go back and fiddle a little bit more in our, like, let's call this execution layer. This is out where some, some things happen. It's not just that we move it out. If we want, if we want to repeat all of these actions, we first have to hide the layer. So we're gonna hide the layer, this layer, when timeline starts, this layer. So first when it starts, right goes out, left goes out, and then we hide the layer. But we want to keep a bit of track of how many characters were entered. So I'm gonna create a new variable. We're gonna call it count, number, value zero. Okay, okay. And we're gonna add another trigger, so adjust, our count, we're gonna add value one when timeline starts, put it on top. So this is the first thing that happens, then the animation happens, then it hides. And let's just reference this um, variable here so we see what's going on. So count, and let's preview. So A, 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 A. Why don't we see the count? Oh, because it's on this layer. Okay, should be on the base layer. So A, 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 Yeah. So you see there's a few problems here, but we're gonna address all of those. Okay, so we have the basic layer out done. Now let's do the layer in, so it goes back in when user presses backspace. So we can, we can actually duplicate this one. We're gonna call it in. So we want to subtract the value. Uh, and But not when timeline starts, but after the animation happens. Um, and we should move in and then we hide the layer. So when do we want to call this layer? We're gonna call it when user presses a key and that key is backspace and actually after clicking this slide that's not great so we want to say text field and then let's also change this here text entry just in case so you know you cannot run this command if you don't click in the field itself so it says key presses text entry text entry text entry yeah So we have A, B, C, A, B, C, yeah. Okay, the basics are down, but the problem is it expands too much. If, if you see, it goes, it goes too far apart. So we want to put some limits here. 
And another limit is when you backspace, we don't want this to go <laughs> like that. So we need some limits there. This is where the conditions come in. So in our out layer, we want to add some limits when the animation can happen. So we're gonna say when count is less than 15, but also I want to add something else. We're gonna start moving when count is more than five. So we want to see some characters first entered before it start, ex start expanding, because there's that, that's the detail I saw in the original. So that's the first limit we'll set here. And then, and then, and then this one, we're gonna again say count is great, greater than five and count is, well, I could just duplicate that, uh, less than 15. Okay, so that's for out, and let's just preview quickly. So A, B, C, D, okay. Yeah, this is still not okay. So out triggers work fine, now let's also fix the in triggers. So actually we can, we can, we can copy and then here we can just paste conditions. Ha! Did you know that? Let's paste conditions again. And now there's another thing we need to do here. When we're subtracting, we want it to stop at five so it doesn't cross and go to minus numbers and things like that. So this can only happen when count is greater than five. So I think, I think this should work. So A, B, A, B. Now it stops, we start deleting, it goes in and it stops again. So yeah, this is a nice way to add a bit more micro interactions just like Joanna did. Take care everyone, I'll talk to you in the next video.